Kuwait Turkish restaurant. Yeah, it's nice. Peace. Nice evening. Yeah. Be like, see, I've got to get up in the morning. <laughs> yeah. You change. Literally, yeah, literally. Yeah, like it's like now, like I wanna. It's like now because of how early I get up. It's like if I ever like go out in the evenings or whatever, Monday to Friday, it's like I'm, it's like nine thirty. I'm cooling it off. Like yeah, go go back, guys. Like what? Oh, what are you yeah. talking about? <laughs> like, I'm getting. I'm up, I'm up early these days. Let's take a look at gold. <clears throat> I'm gonna do some fresh analysis on gold in a minute. I'm gonna do some fresh analysis on gold because I'm I'm expecting us to reach 1760 today potentially, but we're gonna need some serious volume. Right, so today is a very important day, isn't it? We got pound interest rates. What time is that? I think, um, let me see. Pound interest rate 12 p.m. So that's the other thing as well is could potentially wait to see how, what happens there. Or it's being priced in right now. Could be, uh, yeah. We're approaching like this high top frame zone around now. Could stop rejecting from it. Yeah. Daily. Right, we'll come back to gold, pound yen. It's moving up. So where's the next target then? Well, let's go to a four hour time frame real quick. So the next target on pound yen. Right. The next target on pound yen is gonna be 152.650 based on the four hour because we can't go to the smaller time frames. Wish I could. Right, that's gonna be the next target on pound yen if we can continue moving up. And then we should head up to like 800.800. .800. And then, if we can continue further bullish at that point, I think somewhere around 153.500. These are four-hour targets, but the only reason I can do that is because we don't, we can't go back further enough. <clears throat> but anyway, price will make its own targets as we start moving up. I mean, look at that man! Not one pullback. The first pullback was here. Right. Good morning, good morning. How's everyone doing this morning? Uh, gold is every, everywhere. Yes. So today we've got pound interest rates. Today we've got pound interest rates. So we had um, unemployment for AUD. Seems like it got uh, slightly better, I think. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It got it got slightly better than expected. Um, I did some more jobs. That's pretty good. Um, but for pound, we've got uh, the uh, monetary policy and official bank rate coming in at 12 p.m. today. We've also got ADP with CAD and unemployment claims of the U.S. as well today. So big, 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 big news day. Especially for the pound. Today's a big day for the pound. Um, damn, I got into a buy when price broke the high at 152. Uh, you broke got in at the buy at 152. Yes, yeah, near where I got in in uh, on those buys as well. Um, secured at 10 pips. I should have let run more. Yeah, yeah. I should have left the runner as well. But to be honest with you, my my thought process was that we should um, mirror this this candle to the left. As we're coming up, we should mirror this candle. So, like, my target was like roughly somewhere around like 152, 150, somewhere over there. 
like 15, 16 pips away. And then I think I closed like where these wicks were over here. And then my entry was like over here. But yeah, I agree. I was thinking after I closed it, I was like, well, probably could have left like, you know, half the position to maybe run to retest the high. But uh, because I was strong the previous four hour kind of was, I thought, you know, there's, there's just that probability that we may just come up, like tap into this area, you know, before we start retracing. But I don't know, it does seem like it pushed it beyond. So at this point, if you miss this move up, then you're going to want to wait for price to make a, a high. Wait for retracement, wait for support, and then look for continuation. Right, but um, we'll have to see what happens here today. Because remember, we've got pound interest rates. Yeah, it was a solid, solid move. Right, let's do a little breakdown on gold because I am okay. So, looking at gold, it seems as though the daily time frame has tried to continue moving bullish over here after breaking above what's that price? 1739. So, above 1739. We continue moving up. I feel like if we continue pushing further bullish, we can hit up and fill this wick over here. Let's look on the four hour time frame. So as we look on the four hour, so it seems like we've come into a problem area, right? Because we're at this resistance over here on the four hour. What's this price? 1751. Let's just say 1751. So let me just put a little note there. Say 1751 because this is a strong level. So we don't really want to be taking buys below that level. We want to be taking buys probably above that above that level because uh, you know we've got this resistance here. We've got this potential wick to fill if we can have the momentum. So as we look on the one hour time frame, as we look on the one hour time frame, we can remove this now. Okay, so looking on the one hour, it seems as though what happened over here was we had some form of resistance formed, turned support, right, within this vicinity, and now we're trying to continue moving bullish. However, we're having some issues within this area, which is obviously this four hour resistance zone. So we came above that zone originally, and then now we're closing back below it. So good sells on gold is going to be below 1749 for a potential. Uh, short position down to this support around 1744 so that makes sense for potential sales looking on the 30 minute time frame now the issue I have with that on the 30 minute time frame is that this area is pretty messy at this point so obviously this is the high that we're looking for a potential retest but it seems as though right now we're rejecting this area over here as well yeah we're rejecting that area we're coming down we've got support over here we also got support over here so we can't really look for sales on gold really until we're below 1747 and i think buyers are going to be probably above 1752 which would be above the overall four hour area as well so as we look on the 15 minute time frame yeah i think that makes sense kind of have this support over here on the 15 minute time frame as well it's a very important area yeah, 1750 is an important area as well on the 15 minute time frame. We can see we're at support. So we're in a range right now, pretty much. We're in this range, we see these projections. So yeah, we're gonna have to wait and see what happens over here. But we got some good, good key levels here on gold. So we're looking for potential continuation. And then as we look left, let's go to the one hour real quick. As we look left, let's go to the 30 minute. Okay, so if we continue breaking above, then we can hit 1757 would be a good next target, right? And then after that, I mean, we come into some problems around like 1758, and then effectively the next target would be the next level of resistance. So yeah, we'll have to wait and see on gold. There is potential short-term sales down to like 1747, but that's probably not going to be the best option, is it? 
five minute structure as well tells me you know that we want to see we want to be taking buys on the on the dips basically at this point um, but right now there's not a lot to tell me about us heading down just yet so right now if we just focus on the now what can we see well we can clearly see that price is creating a higher levels of support and we were creating let's just say higher levels of resistance at this point now obviously right now we're coming down because we've rejected this area here so i think overall if we do start to break down below this area then there is that short term selling opportunity coming down to 17 500 um, but that is not going to be the best option the best option is going to be to see if we can create a support here again right and then look to see if we can either test this level or wait for a buys above this level some support to form above this area because this is a rejection zone now we can see we did a fake out so if we get a support formed on the smaller time frames above 1752 500 that's going to be a very good confirmation in in my eyes for price to actually start heading back up at that point so that's something maybe i'm going to look for here today but we'll see i think if you was going to sell over here the best you can have is a resistance formed by here because then we would be creating a lower resistance to this level and then we'd be breaking through support to continue down so i think a resistance over here would be better on gold if you're looking for a short short term play okay um let's get some questions um don't know you think uh 152 270 would have been a good entry. let's take a look um, what we saying here? What we saying here? 152, 152, 270. Um, 152, 270. Uh, what is that above the wicks? Break above the the wicks. I think maybe. I think maybe it could have worked out, but I mean, what what confluence did we have on the smaller time frames to tell us that price would continue moving up? Because that would be buying at the high. I'd say if you were going to be buying, it, it clearly seems like the entry was above these this this area here for price to continue with the momentum. But pretty um, pretty difficult because that's not going to work out a lot a lot of times. Well, it, it is to some extent, but not quite the way that you would expect it to work out every time. Because when we usually come to a high point, it's usually a pullback, right? But we haven't seen a pullback here today. Um, morning HFX, you're up early. Oh, I've been up for a while, mate. Don't worry about that. I've been up uh, way earlier, but I like to start the stream at 7. But I've been getting up earlier nowadays. I'm up about an hour before the stream now. Um, good afternoon, good afternoon. Um, H, good morning. Have you taken GJ trade today? Yes. I had buys. Um, I had buys around, I think it was like 151.990 this area here so I had a buy had a buy here and then took profits uh, over here stop was kept below this area so yeah yes I did take buys I caught this push up but then I closed everything over here and then now I'm like oh should have left the runner but can't really think like that <coughs> um, clean move today Asian session was nice GJ back to his trading nature yes asian session was nice you had a support formed over there above this like minor resistance you would then expect these wicks to break and then continue so yeah it was pretty pretty nice move in the asian session um i didn't do any asian session analysis last night I was too too tired um but yeah i think asian session was it was a good session to be fair um okay um boom 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 Secured 40 pips today in GU. Oh, very nice. Good work. That's very good. Yeah, 40 pips. That's a banger, mate. On a Thursday. Strong. Strong trade. Um, we just created new intraday highs on GJ. It's going to pull back to previous intraday support. Yes. I think, I, I mean, wherever price makes a high, it's going to be the t it's gonna be a target, right? So, I mean, if we, if we make a high, we pull back and create some support. It's still pretty good to expect continuation but yeah like you say you know 
whenever we move into these high highs like on the on the weekly or whatever you know we always seem to like pull back a little bit on the daily we seem to always pull back so but yeah i think gj today should continue moving bullish um there were two entries on gj today in the last one hour first one at 152 and the second one at 152.270 yeah I think a lot of people are looking at 270 but I mean you could argue that's an entry based on the fact you're expecting a new high to be created you know and also you're looking at a potential break above the previous four hour high so yeah it makes sense um, but again you know if you look at what happened over here this type of thing can happen where you know, we're breaking the highs we move up and then we get this liquidity grab so that can happen so you just have to um, understand that that can happen so these buys like here I would be going break even pretty ASAP to be honest taking a buy here I know I've got all this room coming up I've got this information to the left right here you've only got information to the way left but what's that gonna help when you know we know that whenever we make a high point like here we pull back so we would expect the same similar situation here to pull back all right bear with me guys i'm just gonna run and grab my drink and i'll be back in like a minute literally a minute so um, let's look at gold quick oh gold's coming down gold is coming down yeah no remorse there on the five minute time frame yeah gold is just taking no prisoners yeah, we should come down to this support area then. Looks like we're rejecting this four hour level at this point. So maybe we're going to need to pull all the way back to like 1738 to create some support on gold. If we break down below this support on the one hour and we create a resistance here, then we're coming down. We are coming down. But gold is just dumping right now. Okay, yeah, let me come back. Give me one Gold, gold is dropping right now. Gold is dropping, so if you want to, yeah, gonna have to wait a little bit here on gold. Pound yen is still moving bullish. Pretty good. Okay. Um, HFX, could this move be caused by Bank of Japan news? I think this one was. I think this particular. So, so basically, when the news came out, so the news that you're referring to is this one here. So, Bank of Japan to widen target yield band to plus minus two point right. Cool, whatever. Right. Don't don't really need to worry too much about what that is. It was four hours ago. So, what was the time four hours ago? So, let's say. Uh, it was around seven o'clock so yeah three o'clock right three o'clock if we go to the time if we look at the time 
there's this candle right over here so this candle was the Bank of Japan news right so potentially we could have moved up from here so but since we pull back right with the, the the news candle if this news wasn't really that important to the technicals on pound yen then it would be, be corrected so what would we need for it to be corrected well as you look as you look at the technicals what can we see we had a previous level of support right over here the previous level of support over here that news candle broke us down we then created a support next candle then close back in the range pull back Estab re establish support in this area price moves up clean candle to left hand side correct the news and now continuation and that was yeah and that's basically what my trade was based off of but the fact we were closing back above support Wait for the 30 minute candle to close bullish to create a support. It closed just slightly below this area, so I wanted to see it break above these wicks to continue pushing up. Very, very, very simple stuff. Okay, um reason for the 152 270 we are on thursday session and the lower wick on the weekly has already formed yes that's true now since we left that area count is expected to rally on thursday and maybe half of friday yes yeah we'll have to see we'll have to see what happens here today oh i'll tell you what i forgot to do always forget to do this Right, come on guys, let's get some likes up in here. Okay. Um, but yeah, I agree with that FX Guna. Um, it may pull back and retest the 152 level today, but I don't think it will go any lower than 151.700. No, I don't think we're coming back down over here. I think if we're going to we're gonna pull back it's probably gonna be to this area or we're just gonna basically continue pushing up at this point so yeah I'll have to wait and see what happens I have to wait and see um, uh, your chart not clear we cannot see currency symbol well the currency symbol is right over here so you need to go into your YouTube settings of the video and turn up the quality of the video because this one's fine if there was a problem, I'd have a lot of people m talking about it. But it's the same every day. So yeah, you need to turn up your resolution on your YouTube. Once be one of them days, you have like what one in a month, two in a month, and it just doesn't stop. Yeah. Yeah, potentially. Yeah, that's very true. And then the next target is like 152, 650, 670, this kind of vicinity. 
I mean, looking on the five minute cannons, we should push up. We yeah, should push sure. up. <sighs> but a pullback would probably be better. But looks like Gold's come back to that area to potentially do a retest on the four hour. So this is a very a difficult situation here on Gold. Because now it is pulling back to do a retest after like kind of like rejecting this area. So we'll have to see. Um, okay. Um, looking for further buys, but got to wait for that support to form. Already took a trade on EJ, up 3%. Don't want to rush into anything today. Yeah, if you took a win on EJ, I would just... I would just Chill out at this point. Um, also, one fifty two to seventy is break of the weekly wick. Oh, okay, fair enough, makes sense. So we're gonna pull back on pound yen over here. Right. Um, how do you find the next resistance? I look left, but too far to find. Um, so basically, I just go to the four-hour time frame because if I go to like the thirty-minute or the one-hour, I don't have enough. You know, you can't. There's too many candles on the screen. So I just go to the four-hour. Just kind of like scroll with your mouse, then like move left a bit, and then you're gonna get the information. So I just been looking at the four-hour levels here. That's all I've been looking at. That's what I've been focusing on. Obviously, we're gonna get issues within those levels, but you know that's where you just know to like uh, where you want to be like securing. The, the safest option is always to find a target with wherever price makes a high, right? Like for example, let's just say this becomes um, this becomes a high, and then we pull back to here, and then let's say we form support. Then you know that from a target perspective, this is a target. And then you don't have to worry about what's left because you have your information right here. Whereas when you're buying, let's say, let's say you you took a buy here, then yeah, you're gonna need to worry about what's here because you don't have anything to go off of. Um, morning, Salim. How's it going? Just seeing you joined. Limit, you must be absolutely shattered. I saw on your story that you was up trading Asian last night. Crazy guy, man. You must not be here right now. Oh, yeah. Alright, fair enough.
so guys catching them be birdie though, isn't it? Then you yeah. can just chill out. Yeah, that's true. I mean, obviously, most days it doesn't happen before the stream, but like if it does, it's like you come onto the stream and it's just like you know, like there's no obligation now to take a trade. Like, yeah, I do, I do prefer like getting in the trade early in the session because then it's like always um, if there's like a re-entry or whatever, you can, you can, you can do that, but. But yeah, and today's example was just was good. I think the move was from here though. Do you know what I mean? Like it's not like you got an earlier entry. This was the setup to move up, and then obviously volume time. We just continued with it. Yeah. Rather than um. Just yeah. The only thing about like about this was going on here. Is that like that happened. Would where would you? Yeah, you wouldn't want your stocks. You want your stocks probably still below here. You know. Yeah, so so if you was gonna get in uh, based off of this, let's just say one hour retest, then your stop would have needed to have been below the previous one hour candle, right? Um, but then because I was waiting for support, it was then, like yeah. my stop needed to be like kind of below this level. But then part of me was thinking, you know, if I execute there, I could put stop below the one hour candle here, but then the stop was like slightly too big for what really reward good. was. Yeah, so I just thought, okay, as long as it's below this area. We should be okay. Like I put a little bit below, just in case it broke the low and then started to drive up again or whatever. But yeah, it was it was fine. It was fine at that point. To be fair, when I added positions, I moved my stops back up over there anyway. So yeah, yeah. Oh, they did the, uh, they did the, um, what's it called, um, did you get an email about the, the parliament debate? I did a while ago, saying they were going to debate it, I haven't actually... Yeah, they must have done it, but I don't know the verdict. It. What's the verdict? Oh, look at my mouse. oh yeah, I see that, I see that. Right, so what does the verdict mean? Where's the verdict? Oh, you can watch. You can watch back. Yeah, but I think it's already happened. But it's not going to tell me what happened with the. How do you? It's one. Do you, it's one hour. How yeah. do you find out? How do you find out what like? The, how do you like it's, find out what happened? Like, what the outcome was like? I don't know. Maybe. Look, hmm. I'm gonna copy the debate. Put it into Google search. It doesn't say. It literally just says Parliament debated this topic. It's mad. Oh wow, they've got the minutes all in it of them talking. Man, I just want to know what the f the verdict was. I have to check after the stream. Okay, um, let's let's get some questions. Um, Bank of England interest rate is today, so be careful. Yeah, I've already taken my trade anyway, but yes, that is true. Um, a Rod took ten trades, two today, only two losses. I trade like a robot without emotions, just price at my key levels. Well, that's the best way to do it, you know, trying to remove that emotion. But that's pretty good. That's a great. That's a great. Uh, it's a great record there. Um, morning, Dylan. You trade for FTMO? No, 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 no. I don't trade anyone else's money but my own. No, I don't trade FTMO. I don't do funding talent. I just do my own funds. 
my own funds. Um, USD bringing that fire back down. Gold is dropping. GU dropping. Yeah, gold was. Yeah, gold is dropping. Yeah, gold is dropping. Not even a pullback on the five minute. You know the volume when that happens. Um, boom, boom, boom. Uh, what are you anticipating from this speech that is coming concerning the euro? Mm, nothing really. Don't. That's not. That's got nothing to do with um, what I'm looking at, so I'm not interested. You know, if it was about pound, I would be interested. If it's maybe to do with gold, I'm interested. But at the moment, any euro news, not so interested. Um, HFX, how many pips did you catch off that move? I think I got like 14 pips in total, but I just put it down as 13. But yeah, I think I got like 13.9, 14 pips, and that moved there. So my entry was at. Um, 151.985, I think it was, and then I took profits at. 13.7, you got. 13.7, I got, yeah? Yeah. Okay, 13. There you go, 13.7. Um, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, so 13.7. The move started off at MY session on GJ after the feds came out with the interest rate. Kept the same, almost every pair spiked up, even gold, it was crazy. Yeah, I saw it happen. I saw that afterwards, but I uh, I didn't take any trades or anything like that. Yeah, I don't I don't like to trade news. I it's not something that I've kind of like looked at or that type of thing anyway. Um, hi sir, did you took that thirty min form support when it broke the high? Yes, yes, because the way that uh, this kind of wicked it kind of like wicked into these highs for the the previous one two three 30 minute candles so i knew that okay if we break these highs then i would anticipate that we would continue with volume moving up because we failed to break the high like one two three so it's an hour and a half of kind of like consolidation and then i was expecting volume then we created a support over here right we've got a nice bottom wick boom clean counter left i was expecting us to mirror this and then at least hit 152, 140, or 180 was the my ideal target, but closed a, closed a little bit early. Just a little bit early. Um, boom, boom. Um, thank you very much. Uh, I got out at 0.134 on GJ. Yeah, I think that's I think that's uh, not a bad shout. It's at that key level here. You've got these potential. Uh, wick rejection, so I think it's pretty good. Are we gonna pull back now on pound yen? We'll have to see. We will see what happens. Um, is a point one lot size too risky for a 1k account? Um, well, I mean, that's up to you, right? That's up to you. It depends on your style, it depends on a lot of things, it depends how much risking on an averagely basis you know um, th th that's completely up to you I mean if you it's all what you want to risk at the end of the day like let's say you've got a thousand in your account and you want to risk I don't know would you want to risk um, per day you could risk maybe like 20 pound per day 10 pound per day 30 pound per day whatever that's completely up to you. That's what you're comfortable with losing on a, on a daily basis. And then you can kind of like, you know, think about the lot size based on your, um, you know, your risk and, you know, what, what about stop loss placements and stuff like that. So I think 0.1 lot size for a 1K isn't too bad. No. Only about 1%, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, it's pretty good. If you would say to me a one lot, I'd say, yeah, you're probably... You're probably looking at a riskier, because that's gonna that's gonna cost you at least ten percent if you take a loss, right? So I think you're in a I think you're in an okay position with that lot size. Yeah, it's all about what you're comfortable with, you know. And um, if if you're comfortable with l losing a little bit more, then that's fine. But you've got to stick with that, you know. If you want to lose twenty pound a day, then risk twenty pound a day. Because then you're going to be consistent. Because then your wins are going to be twenty pound a day or more, aren't they? So as long as you're consistent, then you're fine. And if you're already consistent in trading, then you're you you know that all it is is just a risk parameter. 
obviously there's a psych there's psychology towards that but you want to try and focus on um, you know the performance aspect rather than the money so yeah so did you find out what what it was said then Kelsey uh, I wasn't going to read all this. Oh, no, all fuck that. I might just look it up <laughs> on the internet then. You go near to the end. I might just look I it up. I don't really debate it as in like, they don't actually make a decision. They just like... Well, I think, I think that's how it works. Is it? Do you know what's really funny? You know, like how we had the one "Don't uh, introduce a vaccine passport." I didn't realize there was a petition to actually introduce it. Like they're saying, sign it so it gets introduced, and they only got like five thousand signatures. <laughs> that it? Yeah, yeah. But the one "Do not," we got like three hundred thousand. Like, and they would fully like take take the five thousand side just because they're up there all day. Yeah, we'll have to see. We'll see what happens, man. But I'm flying out this year, man. I'm getting a I'm getting a month in the sun. I need it. I was I was laughing I was laughing with uh, a mate of mine yesterday because I was saying like, you know how like you see all these like forex gurus, yeah, and they're always like on a beach or they're always like on holiday with an Apple Mac laptop with their Rolex on the side and they're like making money and I, 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 I just take the piss I'm gonna be there on the beach with my phone like taking a taking a GJ trade and be like I really do this yeah you're gonna get someone else to take a picture of you on your phone yeah, on trust, your laptop trust. on the beach mm. yeah. really doing this not no not no marketer <laughs> Right, um, thanks HFX, no worries. Uh, let's get more likes, guys. Only 14, and we have 60 in here. Be grateful, doesn't do this YouTube to pay the bills. That's it. Yeah, YouTube don't pay my bills. I haven't even actually been paid by YouTube yet. I think I've earned about 30 pounds off YouTube. I think I just spent that yesterday just on petrol. <laughs> Yeah, YouTube does not pay my bills. I do this because I enjoy it. And I do this because I want to help out people. Offer something for free, you know. It's not always about saying, oh, well, if you want to learn how I trade. If you want to if you wanna trade with me, you got to pay me this, you know. Obviously, we we got a private group. But, you know, it's like it's like first class and, and, and economy class. Like, if you want the first class, you pay for that. Otherwise, you still get... You still get on the flight, you know what I mean? It's still the same journey, but if you want to pay for the higher, the higher service, you get that. But you know, this is free. You still got to pay for economy, though. But yeah, this is completely free. Um, no, no worries, mate. No worries. All right, let's get some charts in here. We got. We haven't had anyone send any charts. Let's see how many charts we can get. Right, let's look at gold. So gold is like tapping into the support.
Um, HFX, how often do you do these streams? Monday to Friday, man, every day. Every day. We are here Monday to Friday, 7 a.m. GMT, every day. There may be like the odd day that I'm not. Or, you know, once in a while I might have to, you know, have other commitment or whatever, but I'm here 99% of the time. And then obviously, yeah, that's pretty much it. <clears throat> EN, what's going on with EN? Has EN broken below that four hour level yet? Oh, we have. Okay, well, that's better from an EN perspective. Yeah, I'll be looking. EN looks like we can continue moving down. Let's look at the weekly. The yeah, only issue is this weekly may pull back a little bit. It's not quite the best structure on the weekly, but daily wise, makes sense. For our, I think it's going to have some problems over here. Yeah, I think it's going to run into some problems. Good sells for EN are going to be below this support for EN to continue with bearish. Yeah, like literally nearly come down. Let's go back to pound yen. So GJ is just kind of like there right now. I think the volume is like kind of slowed down a little bit, but we'll have to see what happens. So we're coming up to London Open in like three minutes time. So I would like to see what happens with London Open. Potential continuation. Potential pullback. So let's see. Um, when when the JPY getting strong for GBP reversal wait for big sell more than a year? Um, no idea. No idea what you mean by that. Not even going to... Yeah, no idea. That makes hardly any sense. When the G the JPY getting strong, yeah. So when JPY is strong, we'll be moving bearish for GBP reversal. Waiting for but yeah, I don't really understand. The first bit made sense. When GBP get getting uh, when JPY getting strong, that makes sense. So when the JPY is getting strong, we would be moving bearish, but we're not. So that suggests that the yen is weak. But yeah, no, I don't I don't understand what you mean. Um. Okay. So, 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 right. Um, right, before I forget, guys, so pretty much at the moment, obviously you guys can see on the front screen the little P emblem. That is for a new broker that I'm going to be basically potentially moving over to uh, very soon. They're a good regulated broker. Been in contact with them for a little while. Um, so if you're looking for a, a good broker, they're doing um, they're doing a really really good deal at the moment. If you join with them, so they're called Pacific Union. You can go look them up. So they're doing a deal at the moment. If you de whatever you deposit, I think you get 20% added on to it. So let's just let's go check them out. Um, and there's a, a a link in the description there for you as well. Um, Pacific Union broker. They're doing. Let's see. Uh, where was the? Uh, hold on, let me find the. Um, let me try and find that. Uh, oh, that was that. Oh, here we go. Promotions. Yeah, twenty percent exclusive bonus. So. Pretty much, if you open a live account today, you can receive 20%. So basically, what that means is um, up to 20% of your deposit bonus amount of up to 10,000. So let's say, and you can trade it and withdraw it. So that's a very, very good deal. So let's say, for example, serious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That how sick is that? Yeah. So imagine if you uh, up. So let's say you deposit like a uh, thousand. Let's just say um, they'll put 20% onto you. 
So they'll give you 1200 in your trading account and you can withdraw that extra 20% or you can trade with it. So if you want to get to join them. Yeah, well, that, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. So I've got, um, I've got another, what's it called? You get a slightly better deal with commission as well if you go through my link. So that is 100% going to be worth doing for anyone. But yeah, they're a really good broker and, they, and I've been looking at their spreads and their spread is is pretty good. I mean, if you go to, um, let's find out their spreads. Their spread on pound yen on average was below a pip, which is pretty good considering most of the time I, I pay about, I'd say about 1.2. So we want the prime account. You want to go for their prime account though. Um, let's see. Uh, trying to find where it says about the spreads but okay so let's just look at here right so for spreads at the moment like GU right now would be 0 0.1 of a pip spread I mean that's that's pretty good that is pretty pretty good yeah obviously I know it says up to but still like you know look into it do your own research I mean it's it's a it's a promotion at the end of the day they're trying to encourage new people to come on and I, I respect that you know they're not like a um, you know if it was like some up-and-coming broker that was trying to just you know gain a lot of people like I would be like yeah whatever but I actually I've been in contact with them because it was something that I was gonna move over to them myself so I'm still I'm pro probably actually gonna do that but yeah thought I'd give you guys a little uh, heads up there but you know again it's not something you have to do it just there's an option there something that's going to help you guys out i mean an extra 20 percent on your trading account if you've got a bigger amount that's going to amount to quite a substantial amount so you know if you put let's say five grand in there then you know you can have nearly up to a you know a thousand put into your account so you can have six grand instead of five grand and you can trade and withdraw that so that's pretty good I think I think the re maybe there's like a catch in the sense that if you if like let's say you deposit more, you're more likely to get a higher amount of that deposit. Do you know what I'm saying? Which is which is fine. Like that's perfectly fine. It's fair enough. You know what I mean? If you're gonna put in only a small amount, I mean, what difference does it make anyway? But if you're putting in a bigger amount, you know, because you're gonna trade with them, you're serious with them, you know, then they're gonna they're gonna sort you out. But yeah, I thought I would. Uh, let you guys know and if you're interested there's a link in my description for this video you can go check them out but yeah anyway looks like pound yen is breaking the highs over here on the 15 minute time frame to potentially continue moving bullish with london open volume coming up to 152 670. Yeah, if this one hour candle breaks this high, then we can continue moving bullish. We may not even pull back over here. Pound yen may not even take any prisoners. If you look on the five minute, we've been consolidating for a little while. So it looks like we're going to start pushing up over here. That's pretty nice. Create a support. You can see clear rejections, liquidity being created. Now we're starting to break the highs over here. We should start to push up with London open volume. It's pretty nice pretty nice yes yeah, so you could have taken it as we started to break the 15 minute candle high obviously you're going with an impulsive move here so you want to start to bring stops to break even pretty quick just in case we do start to pull back um but i think yeah 152 660 with london open volume would be a good target but your stop loss would need to be down over here below the previous 15 minute candle right over here but yeah this situation right now this is good, but you'd really have to expect continuation. You know, there's nothing that other than that. You'd really have to expect continuation. But yeah, there's like that's moving up over there. Anyone getting these buys right now? So that would be a really, really nice move there for Pound Yen. I think this was the re-entry for anyone who missed the initial push. It's like a pullback. This is the pullback. And now we've basically created further support on the five minute and now we're moving up and we should continue moving bullish over here. Yeah, it looks like it wants to just continue pushing up over there. Like this is one of them situations like, you know, you're up like eight, nine pips, 
coming up, you would want to go break even and then see if you can run up. That would be a great opportunity there. Um, boom, boom. Is that broker an international one? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They accept. Accept. Uh, I'm pretty sure anywhere, so it's all good. Yeah, I'm just looking at the Prime account. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. That's the one I would. Well, that's basically what I've got now is an ECM, but they just call it Prime. I think the minimum deposit's a thousand. Yeah, that's not bad though. Nah, it's good. I think if you're gonna be trading properly, like you know, a thousand to t for as a minimum. Yeah, you need yeah. that in it at least. Yeah. Because that's only gonna get you what a point one lot. You know what I mean? So that's not really. But yeah, man, they're. Uh... But yeah. Um, bum, bum, bum. Sign me up, Conor McGregor voice. Ah, <laughs> yeah. Sign me up. You'll do nothing. Is that a pretty good impression? I do like Conor McGregor. So, right, I'm allowed to make an Irish accent. I've got Irish descent. But yeah, this is a great re entry for volume. See, these are the impulse entries that make sense, a lot of sense, right? This is your pullback candle, right? You go on the five minute, you see that support is being created over here. You come to your volume time, you see what time the time is. It's eight o'clock now, so then you would anticipate volume to start breaking the highs and continue pushing up. But obviously, the reason why you have to go break even fairly quickly is because when we see these big fat off rejections like this, these are your volume times when price makes that top wick and it starts to drive down you do not want to be holding trade when that happens uh, Tom Tom like my uh, impression now you'll do nothing right gold gold is trying to create a support over here let's take a look on the five minute okay so we do have a higher level of support right now on gold, we've got support, we've got high level support, so we could see a move up, but it's pretty risky because of this down move, right? So, what's the better thing to do? Wait to see how we react here, wait to see if we can create some resistance and start breaking this support to then start heading back down to retest the lows. That would be better, however, if we do start to create, let's say, move up and then create a further support in this area, then you know that high time frame with respect in this area. Okay, so you need to wait for a confirmation candle first, then look at your smaller time frame structure. Because right now this is not enough to tell me that we would head up on gold. Could easily come down and fill this 30 minute wick if we're not going to respect this area as support. And what would that mean? That would mean we would need to create a resistance over here. If we do create resistance, high probability of us continuing bearish. So GJ should still be con trying to continue pushing bullish. So yeah, just to remind everybody what we were talking about yesterday. Um, so for the month of, so for the first three weeks of June, there's going to be no live streams. 
I'm gonna be away. So just to give everyone uh, another heads up, I put it on my Instagram as well near the time and I post it on YouTube as well so you guys have plenty of notice but I am letting you guys know now and way in advance. Where's Mr. Salim? Can he not talk? <laughs> Do you reckon he's falling asleep but on his computer? <laughs> yeah, possibly. <laughs> Bless him. Salim the warrior. Okay, TJ's kind of like pulling back a little bit. Yeah, not that because obviously we don't. You don't want this thirty minute to then start flipping. Not a good situation. Um, boom, boom, boom. Oh, gold is coming down. Fifteen minutes. Oh, there you go. Yeah, gold. Gold looks like it's on its way bearish, but the stock would have been pretty big. Yeah, got. I, I, I did just see a comment, man, Baba. The, the, the issue I have about gold is yeah this is a good setup like it's a good setup resistance we've got a low to retest um, but the thing that doesn't make sense um, is the fact that the risk would be 26 pips and the reward only 18 so it doesn't make sense to take that trade unless you went pretty much break even like ASAP but then you know what's the point because you the higher chance you can get stopped out quite easily the next five minute can wick back up and then start coming down and yeah, I won't want to be messing about with this right now. I want to see how we set up on the hard time frames here. I want to see if we can create support on the 30 minute. You know, because obviously this is the area that we come back to like retest. You know what I'm saying? So really, better sells would be if we create resistance within this range. You know what I'm saying? So that would be that would be a lot better of a situation on gold. Right, what's GJ doing? GJ just. Yeah, it's the, it seems like we had the volume pre-London, not even London Open. Um, still in longs from 151.850. Want to ride this wave, scaling my stop loss as we continue to make higher highs. You can do that. You can definitely do that if you want to do that. Um, but that's up to you. That's completely up to you. Um, oh, Salim's still awake. <laughs> Sorry, mate. I was, I, was only, uh, I was only mucking about. I saw I saw you was up late last night, and then I was thinking, oh, is he is he gonna be able to make it to the stream? <laughs> right. Um, uh, have you ever tried hacking ashy candles? No. No, I think I've looked at it. I've I definitely looked at it once. I've heard of that 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 name rings a bell, but no, I've never never used it like that. No, I've just focused on. But I've focused on now for a good while. Yeah, ever since I've been doing this, you know, I haven't been looking at indicators, any other candles, any other volume indicator, nothing. You know, I just, just, just been trying to get better at understanding price action and candles. That's literally it. And focusing on one thing has definitely allowed me to get better and better. So. Anyway, um, uh, and gold making that resistance on the five minute. Oh yeah, we spoke about that. Um, when are you starting the gym sessions? Oh, my gym. My gym would re. I think my gym's reopening on the twelfth of April. So I'll be back to the gym on the twelfth. That's gonna be a good day. Big day. Yeah, I'll be there. Big weights. Back in the gym. Back hitting it heavy. See, that was my routine before. I loved doing a stream, finishing off, and then going straight down the gym. That was my thing. Just like, even if I took a loss, win, wherever it was, if I weren't happy, just, you know, go and release some steam. Yeah, gym, gym is a great place. I've missed it. I really have. Yeah, 
miss the gym big time. Gym is just so important for like so many well beings, you know, it's good for your mental well being, it's good for your physical well being. It's like if you know, it's just what's it, like as as annoying me about the whole situation with the the virus, right? Is if this was a truly about combating a virus, you know, you wouldn't restrict people so they're less healthy. You know, you would want anyone who is actually a, considered a healthy person to be at their healthiest. You know, you would encourage exercise, you would encourage healthy, and you would say build up your immune system, take vitamins. Eat good fruits, eat good foods, eat vegetables, keep your body and your, your, your immune system nice and strong. That's what you should be encouraging. You know, locking people in their homes for six months is only going to make your immune system deteriorate because you're not getting fresh air, you're not getting um, healthy food, you, you know, you're not getting as healthy a food, you're not getting proper exercise, you're not releasing the endorphins that you need. You know, all these things really play a major impact and I can't believe that side of science has just been completely ignored. You know, because all the other times they like to talk about it, but then now when it comes to this, it just, you know, everything's just about stopping, oh, I don't know, just about COVID, you know, nothing else matters, apparently. But yeah, honestly, once the gyms are open, I'm going Hamza. I'm going absolutely Hamza. Right. Um, uh, I've been trading with Hekin Ashi Candles and secured 400 pips in a month. It's pretty nice and reduces noise than the Japanese candles. Well, I mean, if it works for you, then, you know, it works for you. Like, you, you, you know, each to their own, as they say. But for me, I just like looking at these candles. You know, just like reading these candles. Just, yeah, it, it's, it's just keeping it simple for me. Um, but yeah. If it works well for you, it works well for you. Looks like pound yen is like uh, trying to pull back a little bit. Um, where is the next resistance for GJ? Well, based on the higher time frames, around 152, 670, 650 area, that is where I'm looking at the next target for pound yen. If we, if this move continues up, that would be my next resistance area based on the four hour because if we go to the one hour or the 30 minute you're not going to see what's left because you know you can't have that many candles on your screen Right, um, yeah, it allows me to be in trade than to be panic. Um, what allows you to be in the trade than, than to be panic? I don't understand. Do the candles. Oh, 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 okay. I don't know. I'm not sure.
Um, as I'm a beginner, I'd like to know how did you find the next resistance? Okay, so basically what I did was we look at where we are now. Um, we look at where we are now and we can see the four hour candle created a resistance over here. So now we're looking at, okay, where the next level of resistance above 152, 230, right? So we look left and scroll left on the four hour. Keep scrolling. Right, okay. So what we're we looking for when we're looking for our area of resistance. So this is where we were previously. This is where we reacted to previously, which is fine. So as we're looking left, we're looking at where's the next area that's going to cause us a problem, aka where's the next level of resistance. So we're looking up, we see clean candle, clean candle, clean candle right over here, this area here. You can see this was a rejection previously. So this is going to be your resistance. Then you do the same thing. You look left and say, oh, clean, clean, clean area of issue. This is going to be your next level. Then you go again and you can see all oh, clean all the way up to that next level up over there. Pretty, pretty simple. But what you need to do is just making sure that you're looking at where we are. This is where we are right now. And you can see, okay, maybe we got problems here. But this is our most uh, recent information. So I think this area is going to be our most important area of resistance. Um, live chat from Pacific Union is like 10k in the account with 20% is 2k bonus. And the lot size should be. I'm looking at this now, actually. I don't understand what he means. So, basically, I'm talking to him now, and I'm okay. trying to find out how this deal works. So, okay. they're saying within six... So, on a 10k account, yeah, you need to trade 260 lots to get this bonus. And you have to, uh, you know, get to that amount of lot sizes in total over 60 days, which would be, is that like, eight weeks? Oh, okay. So, every week you'd have to trade. Like 30 lots on a oh, 10k account. Oh, I see. That's that'd be too much for oh, most yeah, people to okay. get bonus. Okay, fair enough. Oh, I thought, see, I didn't really read into that, but still, yeah. you don't have to take the bonus, you know, like, you don't, you just open an account. Like, that's just a, it was just yeah. a promotion thing, you know what I mean? But if it's not what, you know, if it's not all that, then it doesn't matter. But the actual broker and the live account is what I was more interested in because their spreads are lower. They, 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 they're going to do a good deal on commission. So I think overall, that's going to be much better. But yeah, I mean, I only was looking at it and thought, oh, well, that looks nice. So I mean, like, I think it, I think the fair deal would be like tr trading 260 lots given any time frame. But within 60 days, I mean, that's pretty. Yeah, no, that's quite. Um, that's no, I agree with that. That's harsh. Yeah. Well, I mean, I didn't. Yeah. Oh, well. But as a broker and their accounts and stuff like that they're, they're a very good broker like i mean for you and uh, i mean i know a few other traders that you guys probably know that i think use them so they're not um you know they're no uh they're, they're a good broker but i was uh i i wasn't like um looking at it like oh there's that you know the promotion is what makes the broker i wasn't really about that i didn't really read into it too much i just thought oh that's good it's a decent promotion. Always there's going to be a catch. There's always a catch. You know, they're, they're a business, right? But I didn't really, like, focus on that. I focused on the fact that, okay, what's going to give me a good spread and good commission? And that's what I was happy with. But, um, yeah. Still, though, if you want to trade, like, open a small account and try and get the bonus with it by like leveraging what you can then yeah yeah
DJ is pulling back. See, this is why you want to go break even with these impulsive moves fairly quickly. So if you did take a buy on the break of that 15 minute high, you would have got around like nine and a half pips, right? That is 100% an opportunity to go break even. Because this was exactly going to happen. I'm going to pull back. I'm going to pull back to this area. And now you're going to be back at your entry wondering what you should do. Um... Uh, that's why I said double checked and they said yes, but the spreads are really good. Yeah, spreads are really really good Yeah, no, I didn't even look into it. Like, I wasn't even about that I just said like this is the promotion they're offering go check it out Like no one should just look at a promotion and be like take it for what it is You know, I never ever ever say that, you know, it's like trading Don't just take a buy because you've got a bullish candle, you know, go and look at the more information Like, you know, go go and see so same thing like I was just thinking to myself, you know um something that maybe might interest some people that wasn't even anything that was interested me i all i care about is spread and commission who's going to be the best spread commission and and are they reliable with withdrawals that's that's what i care about yeah to be fair like when you spoke about this broke you haven't even mentioned the bonus or anything so no exactly oh yeah i just literally when i spoke to you about them i just said like oh you know this is this is the spreads on them is much better than what I'm with now. The commission is much better than what I'm with now. So, like, that's 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 what I care about. Do I know anyone that uses them? Yes, I had heard of other good traders that use them. Started to speak to them, ask questions, find out information for myself. Um, H, what's the difference between these account types? Islamic Standard, Islamic Prime, and st and Prime and Standard. If you don't mind, the Islamic ones, I've uh, I can only think has got something to do with maybe the spread or commission because um, you know, like you can get like with mortgages, you can get like Islamic mortgages. So because as part of their religion, they don't pay interest. Uh, so that means overall, like they still incorporated the extra price, but just on paper, they're not paying interest. Um, they're like, you know, they're basically, um, the interest is kind of incorporated in another type of cost. But it's just for like religious purposes. But I don't, I have no idea about that. All I can tell you is about the difference between prime and standard. So your standard account is going to be predominantly higher spread, low commission. And your prime account is going to be low spread, and you're going to be well, the 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 standard account will be zero commission, high spread. That uh, that particular account type is not ECN, so that means that the standard account you're going to be basically betting against the broker. All brokers basically have one of those accounts. You want to always go for, in my opinion, the ECN or or a prime account. So with the, this broker, you would go for a prime account because that means you're going to pay spread. A little bit of, so a small amount of spread commission uh, and then that means that you're you're basically uh, dealing with the direct liquidity provider you're not you're not betting against the broker so you're you're being entered in into the actual let's just say liquidity pool of you know buyers and sellers of the market that's a that's what I've got right now so my ECN account is the same as the prime account if I was to have a standard STP account, that's the same as their standard account. But the Islamic side of things, I don't know. You're gonna have to look at that. Um, maybe I'll I can see if I can see a difference, but I don't. I don't know what the uh, I don't know what the difference is. Um, uh, let me see. Um, I don't I don't know in truth uh, let's just see what an Islamic account says let's read it um, okay to so swap free so I think that's something to do with the interest so instead of the swap the owners of swap free accounts are charged ah, I see so they basically I think they change it yeah because of um, this account type was created especially for Muslim belief clients who are not allowed to trade with swaps because of Okay, fine. Fine. So that's basically to do with that's basically for um, you know Muslim uh, for the for the religion basically because they uh, 
they don't they don't pay interest or swap so i think um that's why they can't pay just interest. change it over pretty much yeah <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> um yeah that's to do with um yeah i think yeah if, if you're going to choose an account i would re i would go with a, a prime account that's what i would go with um ftmo has good spread has good spreads too yeah but you gotta do ftmo i don't need to have an account but they're not a broker though ftmo are they surely it would use another broker right they're not their own broker are they but i don't know but i mean i don't know about anyone using ftmo but i mean if i'm gonna recommend a um like a what do you call it a funded account i would i would go with funding talent all day i've just not heard like anyone i know that's said about ftmo ftmo about six months later i never hear anything about it do you know what i mean so i don't know about them man I'm not really keen on ftmo i'm not gonna lie i mean i had I, at one point when when the whole thing with raja talking about ftmo and how he he wasn't you know he thought there was a scam or whatever you know the amount of people um the amount of people that were messaging me like oh man ftmo done this ftmo done that i'm like man listen i have i don't deal with a fund it like i don't like don't come to me like i don't i don't do that stuff i don't i've never i've always just said you know trade your own money like you know if you want to get funded maybe do that when you're profitable with your own funds first and you want to make a second income that i will that i'll 100 percent back anyone on if you've done the research and you know who you're dealing with but um, the other way around, you want to trade someone else's money first. Uh -uh. I don't. I just. Yeah, I don't agree with that. But anyway, I'm not going to get into all that debate. Um, FTMO has good. Uh, I want to become Muslim now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Don't have to pay swaps. So. Tell the bank you're. Uh, tell the bank that you're a Muslim. You don't have to pay interest. Don't have to pay interest on your mortgage, um, but yeah. Okay, um, when would you execute a sell on GJ? Is it as soon as it touches the resistance? No, 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 no. no I can tell you're probably new to the stream because if you wasn't. I'll be shouting that. No, I'm joking. I won't be shouting at you, but um, yeah, we don't do that. Basically, let me un let me let me let me explain to you how the market works. Right, market works in stages. Okay, right. This is how the market works. When price moves up, we don't just go straight up. Right, we don't. You don't just see. You don't just see. Uh, you don't just see candles do this. Um, you never really see just this. Yeah, you're never just going to see that when we go from here to here, right? What you're more likely to see is like this. Right, just hypothetically, right? Oh, wrong color. Right, that's how the market moves, yeah? In stages, right? So here, right, let me zoom out for a sec, give you a bit of perspective here, yeah? So... Focus on what you can see right now. Would I take a sell here just because we came to a resistance? No, right? Whenever price is in an uptrend, okay, which we are in right now, you can see that. Let's just look, focus on here, right? Whenever price is in an uptrend, right, you need to be waiting for the pullbacks, aka, right? Let's let's talk about the pullback. So start over here, right? Uh, let me change color. Let me make it pink so we can all see it. Okay, so let's just presume this is a resistance. I'll put R for resistance. What are we waiting for to take a buy when we when we form resistance? We are waiting for a support. So we have a support formed, right? So this is a resistance, this is a support. Price moves up, creates a higher level of resistance. Pulls back, creates a higher level of support. Moves up, creates a higher level of resistance. Pulls back, creates a higher level of support. Moves up, creates a higher level of resistance. Pulls back, creates a higher level of support. That is your uptrend right where do you want to be buying or selling do you want to be selling here no you don't why 
Yeah, you're going to say to me, but yeah, it did move down. Okay, fine. But are your runners going to go anywhere? Are you going to be able to have a good, consistent win ratio? What's going to be more consistent, right? What's going to be more consistent? Selling here every time and then going a little bit into profit and then reversing. Going a little bit into profit, then reversing. You don't even know. But let's say, for example, you sold here. You would have hardly got anywhere and then it would have been a losing trade. So what's the better option? What's the better what's the better option? You wait for resistance, you wait for the retracement, and you wait for support. What happens when you buy support? At support, sorry, what happens when you buy at support? It breaks through resistance and you get a runner. So let's just measure this, right? Let's say you took a sell over here. Let's say you took a sell here. You got 10 pips on the way down. Let's say you took a buy though, when you waited for support, you got 30 pips on the way up. What's going to be more beneficial? Waiting for support. Yeah. So now you can see this morning when I took my trade. Do you think I took a sell because I saw a bearish candle at resistance? No. What did I do? I waited for support. Um, what happened? We got a nice run. So I took a buy over here. We created support. We had a, a resistance to retest. Right. So this is... Um, so here is your, so this is resistance, oh, I've gone the wrong one, right, this is resistance here, we made a higher level of resistance, what am I waiting for when we make a higher level of resistance, I'm waiting for support, we create support, we create a higher level of support, right, you take a buy to retest that resistance, to potentially break further on, if, I, if I'd held my trade, you know, we're looking at about, we'd be up about 60 pips, 50 pips right now, right, that's my better option. Right, so what do you think we're going to do right now? You're going to need to wait to see a resistance, pull back, support, take a buy. That's how the market works. Let me just show you the, the four hour real quick. Right, what's going to make more sense overall structure wise? Buys or sells? Look at the structure. Do you think we even want to be even considering a sell when evidently every time we create a support, we head up, support, support. Support, 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 and support, and support here. Every single time. So what's going to be better? Say you started off buying down over here, and then you would be secure positions at the resistance, and then let a runner run do the same thing over and over and over and over again. Imagine if you held positions from here and you just wanted to swing the whole thing because you knew that high time frame structure was so bullish. Now you're becoming a profitable trader. Now you're understanding how the market works. And if you're going to sell in an uptrend, man, you're not going to get nowhere. I can tell you now. I can promise you right now. I can promise you. Selling just because we're out of resistance? Oh, man, no. Not a good idea at all. But obviously, I understand that you're a newer trader. That's why I'm trying to educate you on that. So your best option now would to be to wait for a support. Right? Or we're going to need to see a further retracement, support, and then continuation. You know? But it's kind of like the same thing. Like, um, yeah, I think that's a good enough explanation. I think that's going to be your better option in, in trading for you to be successful and profitable.
Um, I was looking for reversal, but you have a point. Follow the trend. That was helpful. Thanks, man. No problem. That's going to save you a lot of heart, a lot of heartache. I can tell you that now. Follow the trend. There's an old saying, the trend is your friend. And you know it's an overlooked saying. It's, a, it's, it's probably the best saying that there is going. And still, you know, I'm not saying you, but some people don't understand that concept. You know, the trend is going to be your friend. Trying to be a hero and go and count a trend, it's not. It's just not going to help your situation. Um, okay, so right now we're creating a support over here on the smaller time frame. So this is just a little bit different. This is just like a a minor support being created. So you have to see if we start to create a support over here, or are we going to start coming down and we see a retracement on the high time frames. So that's what I'm waiting to see what happens. Um, anyone can share on how to join with FTMO. I can't. I can't help you with that one. I'm sure someone who's done FTMO can. Um, but I mean, me personally, I've heard some great things about. Um, I've heard some great things about um, funding talent. I think they're. I think they're a lot better. I've not heard of any issues of them whatsoever. But FTMO, just I. I, I constantly get bombarded with. Oh. I failed the test because of this. Oh, they did this. Oh, that. I mean, with that amount of noise, I mean, even if I wanted to, that would put me off ever working with them personally. But I'm not here to discourage them. I'm just here to provide you guys with insight and information. You know, you guys can make your own decisions about who you want to who you want to join with, what you want to do with your money. That's your money. But you know, if you want me to be 100% real, that's what I'm gonna do. So, um, can I ask what do you mean by price action? Yeah, so price action, um, when we talk about price action, we're basically just talking about the candles, we're talking about structure. So, for example, I'm a price action trader, which means I just focus on where candles are closing. Um, if they're closing, you know, bullish, bearish, where my targets are, all based on what the candles are telling me. So, a price action trader would say, um, okay, well, I'm looking for buys. We created a support here above this key level, right above this key level, um, and this is the next resistance level that I'm looking to target, and that's my trade. That's a price action trader. Someone who's maybe like an indicators trader or you know a fundamentals trader, they're going to do things very differently. So an indicator trader would go. Okay, well, my RSI and my trend line and my um, MACD is crossing over. So let's draw a little MACD. So they would have their indicator down the bottom and they'd have this wave thing going on. And then you'd get this thing going on. And then you'd have like a few bars to tell you the volume. And then you'd be like, okay, well, this crossed there. This did that. We have the blue bar now. And I have us respecting trend. RSI crossing over, volume indicator, blah, blah, blah. We find that to be, well, most of us find that to be the least helpful situation because it's just overcomplicating the fact that um, it's very, very simple. When we say price action, we're basically trying to simplify the fact that we don't need an indicator to tell me that the next candle is going to go bullish. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to read what the candles, what price action is telling me, what the price is telling me. So for me to make an informed decision that because this candle closed bullish above support, that the next candle will continue moving bullish. Um, okay, uh, FTMO, not for newbies. You have to have good money management skills to be consistent. I would agree with that. I would agree with that with any funded account and then even agree with that with your own trading account you need to practice those good skills to begin with um, have you ever been to India no um, which type is more profitable well I wouldn't be doing this way if there was a better profitable way plus I used to have indicators and all it would do is put me off a trade uh, plus everyone else here most of the people here don't use indicators as well so that I think that says a lot um, and plus anyone I know, I, everyone I see that makes out they make money all have indicators. And it's very funny because these are all the people that are the fake gurus. But anyone that I know that actually just trades candles, price action, key levels, they do alright. 
they do much better. Some of them still a bit shady, but uh, majority of those, we're not going to say majority, but some of those uh, do know what they're talking about. So there are other people in the industry that do, but there are also others that don't. But yeah, I wouldn't be doing any other way. I find this to be the easiest, simplest, most profitable way. You know, you don't need no indicator. Because look, an indicator, yeah, you can only indicate, right? An indicator can't tell you whether price is going to go up or down. Okay, price is going to tell you whether price is going to go up or down. Not an indicator. Yeah. But, anyway. That's all up to you, man. I'm not going to... I gave up. I gave up trying to convince people not to use indicators because they're just like they're so convinced that it helps them. So, what can you do? I'm not going to have an argument with somebody. So right now on pound yen, if we're pulling back, that's a good situation for anyone who's looking to take buys. This is going to give you an opportunity if we can create some support above 152, 250, right? Because if this is a resistance now, this is becoming a resistance. Remember, I spoke about when price comes above, let it make a target for you. This is this is price making a target for you. So now wait for a retracement. Right, how many likes have we got here? We better have some decent likes. And chatting away. 31 likes, pretty good. But zero dislikes. Okay, good. Okay, so yeah, pound yen is coming down. That's pretty good. It's pretty good for people looking for potential further upside because the four-hour candle is coming to a close over here in seven minutes. So if this four-hour candle closes above this resistance, we should see the next four-hour candle maybe come back into the zone, do like a retest, and then you're looking for a potential continuation to fill the wick. Okay, so again, understand where you are. If you can buy here, you're in a much better position than buying here, which is why I talk about the impulsive move. You needed to go break even very quickly, and that's exactly why. Um, okay. Um, when you take a buy, you place the stop loss at bottom of 15 or 30 minute wick. Most of the time, it's going to be the 30 minute because um, the 30 minutes a safer place to place your stop loss. So. Um, yeah, I'd probably go with the uh, 30 minute in 95% of the circumstances. Um, I have a 300k FTMO account. Oh, nice. Oh, that's pretty good. Uh, I haven't had any problems. I feel the only problem people have is they over trade or over risk. Yeah, definitely for, um, for losing the money. Definitely. That's the only reason. But I have, I will be honest, A-Rod, you know me, I'm an honest guy. I've had people come to me and say that, you know, they've had challenge, like they were profitable, they passed the challenge and there was some fault, there was something that went wrong or something like that with FTMO and it just seems to be funny how it's always them. So I'm not saying that they're a scam or anything, I'm not trying to, you know, if you're with them and it's going well for you, that's good, you know, you can tell your experience and that's going to help other people make their decision. Um, but you can't ignore things that have happened, whereas fund and talent, I haven't heard one thing. I'm gonna have one single complaint about anything they do. That's all. You know, because obviously, if I go and tell people, yeah, FTMO is fine, and then someone comes back to me and they go, oh, well, I failed the challenge because of the X, X, Y, and Z, but I actually I didn't fail it. I passed it, and you said they were good. I'm not taking responsibility for trying to promote something that I didn't even like know nothing about you know I'm just telling what I know about them and that's it you know I don't say go do it I don't say don't go do it just 
giving the information. I'm an, I'm an informer. Not a police informer, but I'm an informer. Um, boom, boom. An indicator only tells what price has been. Yes, that's it. It only tells you, well, in theory, yeah. I mean, like a volume indicator or something like that. Yeah, I mean, you're right. It can't tell you the future. It's not going to predict you the future, basically. As much as uh, some people like to say that it, it will, but I'm afraid it doesn't work like that. How to see previous price in trading view or shorter time frame when there is a gap of two years? Um, I'm not sure. I'm not too sure about that one. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, uh, GJ coming down to 152.200. Potentially. I we'll have to see what happens with this candle closure. Yeah, we'll have to see what happens here. I heard funding talent good too. I want to try it. Yeah, man. Yeah, I think it's like a second income. Hundred percent. It's a great idea. You can do it in that kind of in that kind of way. Um, but definitely once you're um, what's it called? Uh, definitely once you've become profitable. I'm not talking to you directly. I'm just saying in general. For anyone thinking of doing any sort of funding talent, any sort of funding account. You know, you need to be profitable before you do that. You need to be consistent. You need to be a consistent trader. Because otherwise you're just going to lose. And you're just going to lose the money that you spent on the account. And that could have gone into a trading account. That could have bought you something else. That could have gone to something more beneficial. You might as well have... Um, might as well have... Yeah. Um, what time do you end this session? Um, it depends. It depends. I think today we'll probably finish. Um, I think today we'll finish maybe about half an hour, 45 minutes. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. For about half an hour. Yeah, they've been finishing a bit earlier recently just because there's still this like gap between us and uh, over in the US and Canada and that so they're all starting streams earlier and so when, when that's back and normal then it'll be it'll be fine it'll be different is that the four hour close is a whole hour earlier this should have been in an hour but it's not so the four hour candle is closing above that area so we should continue moving up we should do but we always seem to get these reactions at high points always so just remember that you need to wait for a solid support to form. Look at the past few days, type of things that have been happening for buys, right? Um, where was it? Yeah, like support being formed over here, like over here, and then continuation back up to test the highs. That's the type of thing you want to be waiting for. So you need to wait for a support to form. Um, what pair is on your screen? This is pound yen GBP JPY um, Raj Raj are always promoting FTMO is he? I thought he used to uh, dislike FTMO 
But I haven't I haven't heard it in a while. Be nice if it doesn't have, <coughs> nice have a fake out. Yeah, well, like yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Trust. Oh, it's the, it's the double fake out, isn't it? Oh, shit. <laughs> the double fake out. Um, okay. Um, HFX, at what specific point would you consider support? For example, right now price is creating a support, but we don't know where. How would you acknowledge a support created? One candle rejections. Okay, um, so basically, when I'm waiting for a support to form, first of all, I'm looking at where we are. So right now, I'm looking at, okay, this area here, this zone, is a previous area of resistance. Okay, so when, a, when we have a previous area of resistance, this is the first place that I want to see a support form right this is the first place i want to see a support formed because it's above that resistance right so now as we look one hour kind of pull back we pull back to this area so yeah the the a support is formed whenever we have a kind of closing bullish right that's a support now obviously we can um we can discuss whether it's a 15 minute it's a 30 minute that doesn't really that that's not really the point the point is you're looking at okay is it a solid enough confirmation right so if we go to yesterday's example for a sec um what was yesterday's example because that was a decent example of where was that uh am i bugging or what's the date yesterday 17th isn't it? right over here okay so let's just um remove the drawings for a sec so focus on this this area right in the middle of my screen, right? Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna draw it out. So this area was the area we needed to be respected as support, okay? And this was the high that was created right over here. So we were looking for buys to retest the high. I had to leave early, so I missed it. But effectively, I was looking for buys to retest this high. Now this candle here, this bullish candle, was a support created. That is a support, without a doubt. That is a support. However in this circumstance this candle was not a good enough confirmation for me to take a buy it was a weak candle if we go on the smaller time frames like the 15 minute and the five minute we were still creating minor resistances which suggested that the trend in the short term based on the last three candles is still bearish so there's no buys at that point there's not enough confirmation to say that we were going to head up so um so effectively uh that candle was not enough for me to take a buy so still waiting at that point next candle comes down closes bearish so at this point there's no buys right there's a hundred percent no buys you can't take a buy now the next candle is bearish that means it's created like a minor resistance but we're still at that level you know right now there's nothing you can't take a buy you can't even sell it because you know why would you sell it you got all this traffic to the left you're not going to sell it we're still in an uptrend four hour candles are still open one hour candle is still open so you're not going to sell it so you're waiting now this candle this candle right over here it closed back above the range it closed back above this support here like this right closed back above this level this candle as it started to come up and break in this high over here that was your entry because of the fact that we closed back above and what that really means is a deeper level of support was created that means that this these wicks that you're seeing here are lower time frame supports being created and liquidity being generated this is your lg liquidity grab because we broke down below the range we broke the lows you can see this is a liquidity grab because then we ended up closing back above this area so once we did that 
there was a higher probability for the next candle to go bullish right yes we never retested the high but at least you would have got some pips on the way up to nearly get there you know you could have at least mirrored that candle there to the left right so that was your move there in that example so we never know how the support is going to form right it may be the most simplest example and i'm going to draw it where we're where we are right now um up over here just to give you an example so right now this candle is still open so it's not really a support form yet you're gonna have to wait um so let's say for example what we're looking for here on the 30 minute what would be a, a good support well for me what i like to see to give me confidence to say we're gonna head up i would want to see a candle coming below this area right wicking below and then closing above right like this why would that give me confidence because what can i tell about this candle we tried to come down below but we closed above which means we're respecting the previous zone that's what i'm looking at that is what i'm looking at we are looking at is price respecting the previous zone so for me a good 30 minute candle would be something like that where i can see a nice wick below with a strong healthy body for the next one to create a little bit of a wick and then start to come up breaking the highs to retest the high over here that's what i'd want to see that's the type of thing i'd want to see see the fact that this 30 minute can has already moved up with no bottom wick tells me from my experience that this candle may flip and then start to come below this zone but that's not the point it's about where it closes where it prints right you want to see the candle print because as we look on the smaller time frames when i mean when i talk about a minor resistance on the smaller time frames what i'm actually referring to is the fact that you know we look at price from one 30 minute candle so let's say for example um one 30 minute candle is going to look like this bullish 30 minute candle is going to look like this but what's really going on in fact let me do a bearish 30 minute candle the pullback let's just re redraw the pullback candle so this is the pullback candle from a 30 minute perspective this candle right over here so now if we like uh you know like a doctor they, they dissect things if we dissect this candle and say okay what more information do we have and we focus on this area here this is that 30 minute candle so let's discuss what happened in that 30 minute candle structure wise structure wise we created a resistance on the smaller time frames right on the smaller smaller time frames and we create a lower resistance we're now creating potentially a lower resistance so what do i want to see for me to tell me structurally wise we can start heading back up i want to see a support we're getting now and i want to see a higher level of support i want to know that these resistances are not going to be respected i want to see a higher level of support on the five minute that's just my five minute structure right in confluence with the 30 minute time frame in confluence with your higher time frames that's what i want to see so until i see that i'm not sure we're going to head up yet right based on the the smaller time frame market structure i'm also not sure this candle is going to close bullish yet because it's still open we may well wick down and then come back below this area but what i would want to see is if we come below with a closure and then so let's say for example um ignore this candle here where we get a candle closing bearish below that zone like yesterday right we come below and everyone's like oh there's no buys now and then the next candle does something like this that although you're like mm, that's a bit of a dodgy price action we're actually creating a deeper level of support here and all that means is we're closing back above our key level you see a re you should see a retest and then a continuation exactly like yesterday okay so you've got to understand how the candles form right go and watch how the candles form if you watched if you watched this candle form you'll notice how it created a top wick first and then went bearish so what do you think this candle might do think about that anyway for the most part right now we're just chilling one hour can still open we're not really sure what's gonna happen yet so you're gonna have to wait you know there's no doubt about it you have to wait you know you gotta also make sure you have enough range if you if you if this closes as it is would you have enough range to take a buy some would say yes some would say no you know so you have to think about those things as well but we'll come back we'll come to that nearer the time okay um 
so yeah hope that hope that helps I hope that helps um Roger promotes fun and talent oh that's what I thought um did you have a chance to trade during the FOMC news no no I did not trade any of the news um great tutorial you're doing I would like to start trading where do I start well this is where you start this is where you start learning this is a free live stream you can come here and you can learn you can learn for free that's what you want to do I mean you're, you're at the place where you start man obviously I'm not gonna do anything we can't do anything for you all we can do is provide you with information and skills I appreciate it so much fam that's all right mate no problem that's what we're here to do we're here to help um, great explanation appreciate it no problem no worries no worries at all um, would you say it comes to experience to wait for candles to print versus impulsively entering yes I would say that um, I would say that if you're um, a new trader, then it would be better to wait for candles to print. And then when you become a bit more experienced, you can kind of take more of an impulsive sort of trade. But you need to understand when's the right time to do both. But that would just come with experience and time. So um, I think if, if you're a new trader, the best thing to do is to play the safer game and wait for candles to print in your direction. You know, that's always the safest because when a candle is still open, it's very, very easily or quickly it, you can get stopped out, right? So you don't want to put yourself through that like anxiety, that, that frustration early on. You want to be taking safe options to build your confidence up. That's, that's the most important thing. Um, sometimes I notice I miss moves when waiting for candles to print, but it seems it all goes back to structure. Yeah, so exactly like... For example, yesterday, right, um, I missed the impulsive move up, right? I missed that impulsive move up. We waited, didn't we, Kelsey? We waited two minutes for the candle to close, right? It was above a level. We had two minutes left. We were like, okay, two minutes, and we're going to take a buy. Within the last minute, it did the whole 20 pip move, right? So it missed the move. That's just how the game goes, you know? But I got to see then as me, how could I have caught that? What, what happened? I got to dissect that information and say, okay, what happened? Why did I miss that move? And then you can go on the smaller time frames and see why it did that in the last minute. Why did it do it in the last five minute candle? What was it about that situation that made that happen? But you want to see that over and over again. But I think um, missing the move by waiting for the candle to close is a really great skill. Like it's a, it's a very valuable lesson because if you tried to catch every single impulsive move, you're gonna have a lot a lot of problems you know there's there's always gonna be moves you're gonna miss I miss moves all the time I missed both setups yesterday that's fine I came back today today's a new day and I, and I had a win this morning that's how trading works you're gonna miss moves all the time I reckon I've missed thousands of moves but all I want to do is go back and see how I could have caught that so I know for next time and then you do that so many times you're gonna see similarities within the moves you're gonna see um, you know what it is you need to be looking for to catch those moves but yeah definitely structure is a, a big big thing to do with impulsive moves if you, you know when you're looking at the structure that's really gonna give you insight um, I'm just trying to find where yesterday's move was um, I think it was here wasn't it yeah it was over here so this candle I was waiting for this candle to close above this resistance 
But like I discussed yesterday, my buy should have been on this candle based on the structure, not based on the fact of a candle closing out of the range. So I missed the opportunity because I wasn't 100% there with you know, the, the logic behind the trade. This candle here moved up in the last two minutes or whatever it was of the candle. So if we go back to that and try and understand why that happened, if we actually go back to why that happened, um, where was that? It was... Uh, where was it? I was over here. So when I look back, the reason why the last 5 minute candle moved so, so much up is because if you look, the 5 minute time frame created a support with nice rejections above that level, above that support on the last couple of minutes. So once we started to break the highs, clearly we had volume to push up. Is what it is. Just had to see how I could accord it and now I know. So you know, there's that side of it or was I just late to what actually I should have been in already, which is the argument that I'd probably make. Anyway, let's get back to where we are now. Let's see what's going on. So I believe the 15 minute candle is closed, right? 15 minute candle is closed bullish. 15 minute candles close bullish, but so this is what we would call a minor support form. Is that enough for me to take a buy? For me, no. Because what am I looking at now? I'm going back to my five minute to look at structure. Do I have a higher support level created yet? No. We've got lower resistance, lower resistance, support, lower support. We have not got a higher level of support yet. I'm not convinced we're heading up yet. So I'm not taking a buy at this point. Yeah, I think we need to on the four hour lot like, retest on the 52 to 200 first. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Right, yeah. Plus, that one hour had no wick, so we may actually get the wick, what was supposed to be there, and then it ends up closing bullish. So, we'll see how the 30 minute candle kind of closes is going to be the safest option. See how it closes. Um, I appreciate your teaching skills. It's simple to understand. Thanks, bro. I appreciate that a lot. Thank you very much. Um, but I'm glad that it makes sense to you. I just try and put it in the best way that I can for everybody to understand. It's very difficult because some people are on different levels of understanding than others. Um, but I'm just trying to make it a broad understanding so that it's not too complicated. But it's also not too simple that I can teach it to a five-year-old. You know, we are trading is a very, very difficult thing. You know, we all need to have a level of um, some form of level of intelligence and it's not about intelligence like you need to be able to read a book it's about understanding you know and reading what's going on in situations you know intelligence in 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 trading terms um please remove background music no we've had that we had that discussion yesterday um i guess that's what it all comes down to seeing what exactly is going on in the market as if you uh, intuitively know when to take an impulsive entry yes yeah i think with impulsive entries the one thing i've learned about them uh is stop loss placement is very key if you've got your stop loss in a very aggressive area then expect expect to take a loss if you don't then it's a good thing um, but if you expect it, then it's okay. But if your stop loss is in a, a conservative area, then you allow that trade to like almost, so let, let, let's just say for example, I don't know, there was a bearish candle, um, I don't know, there's a bearish candle closed like this, right, at resistance. And you wanna take a buy once we start to surpass the high, impulsive move on the next candle. So let's say the next candle does start to move up, breaking the high like this, and you entered in the trade here, an aggressive stop would be below the current candle. So if this candle flips, then you, you, you're stopped out. You have to understand that. But what's a conservative place gonna be? Probably below this wick or even below a zone that's like in an even safer place. Because then even if it pulls back, you know, you're like, okay, well, that's fine. And just kind of wait to see how it prints then. And then if it ends up going back in your way, ended up coming back to make a bottom wick, and close like this you know your trade still valid so you can hold it at that point but being too aggressive with the impulse entries you're asking for some problems who's gonna say something coast no nah, i was just having a drink okay. <laughs>
Okay, so we have kind of created like a higher level of support over here on the five minute time frame. So that may suggest that we can continue moving up, but it is just a one candle on the five minute. You know, usually I like to see like a couple of candles printing bullish, so you may get like a little bit of consolidation. Another bullish candle would be a good level of platform to say, okay, we should start to head up. Because if we just start coming down and breaking this area, then this is invalid. Not a good enough confirmation. The best thing to do is always to wait for your candle to close in your direction on your higher time frame first and then wait to see. So we we'll see. We will see what's cracking here. But this may be may be the first indication. And I say may. I very well much say may. So yeah, we'll have to see how this 30 minute candle closes. Yeah, this support was not enough. We've already started to break down below that. One candle is not enough. See like this sort of situation is a better situation because you can clearly see support being formed on the five minute, a lot of wicks. This is not the best situation. Oh, we haven't really looked at gold in a little bit. Let's take out gold. Oh, looks like gold did come down to fill that wick. Let's take a look what happened there. Yeah, we created a lower resistance right over here. I think I, think I missed a selling opportunity over there. Would have been good sells around this vicinity here for pro to continue down. Now, that would have been a better, better place to take a sell. Um, but then again not the best um, 30 minute 30 minute candle still open so we'll see how the 30 minute candle closes gold did this yesterday it closed back above that range because we were speaking about same sort of thing with gold right now but the four hour candle did actually close back in this range which is a bit of a difficult situation at the moment pound yen yeah, we're going to need to see how this 30 minute candle closes because this is not the best outcome right now. Um, <coughs> okay, um, can you touch on the psychology behind the time frames, how you use them for analysis and entry points? In terms of psychology, I just find that, you know, the higher the time frame, the higher the confirmation. So if you used to take a buy based on the four hour, you're going to have a lot higher um what's the word like um it's a higher confirmation than let's say the 15 minute right there's a higher confirmation time frame if i go to the one hour it's the same situation one hour is going to be a higher time frame confirmation than let's say the 30 minute but then let's say the 30 minutes going to be a higher time frame confirmation than the 15 minute so in terms of psychology if you take an entry let's say based on a 15 minute candle closing bullish you know that within 15 minutes you can get stopped out right whereas within an hour 30 minute you get more time to see what's going on to see if you need to manage your trade so i think that's a little bit down to like your personality and what you find is going to be easier so if you're someone that likes to just set a trade kind of like chill out a little bit let it do its thing then try and take trade trade off the higher time frames um, but then sometimes what you can do is what I like to do is base the trade, let's say off the one hour, but I'm finding my entry off the 15 minute. Let's just let's just use as as an example uh, out loud. Um, so yeah, so right now, 
There's no buys on pound yen. Um, but we'll talk about that more in depth soon. Um, okay, uh, HFX, is the one hour a liquidity grab to push to the downside? Um, I don't know. I don't know if we're going to do that right away, but we'll see how this one hour candle closes. If it closes above 152.230, then I mean, I don't know if we're coming down. I think we could still come up. If we're going to close back in the range, we need to see something similar to yesterday, like the fake out situation and then price continuing moving up. But right now, I would agree that, I mean, it's not respecting this. Yeah, we need to wait for it to close and then we can talk. If we close back in the range, I wouldn't be like, okay, yeah, now we're coming down to support. I would be like, okay, we're either going to close back above and that's just a four hour doing a retest or if we create resistance within the range again, then there's a higher probability of us coming down. But apart from that, until that happens, we don't know yet. So let's just hold on three minutes, see how this kind of closes. Um, past FTMO today had a $5,300 day caught GJ and GAA buys. Very nice. Congratulations, mate. Well done. Um, hi, when you first started, can you share your experience, the lot size you took, and how many trades you did per day? I've always taken the same amount of trades per day, like one trade a day, two day, two trades a day is what I kind of aim for, mainly one trade a day. Uh, and I first started off with point, point 0.1, so penny lots. I started off with penny lots, on my first £100 account was what I did. That is what I did. And it worked really well. It built up confidence, you know, I could take trades, I could not worried about losing the money, losing the trade because it was a, such a, a minuscule amount. So it was more about, you know, learning the lessons through that training experience. Um, so I would I would always recommend people start at the very bottom, but people don't want to do that. They always want to skip, they want to skip um, steps. They want to skip some vital steps. And I did, I actually didn't start off that way. But then when I did to become profitable, I started from the very bottom. When I realized what it was, what it's going to take for me to be successful, that's when I started from the very bottom. Before that, I blew three accounts. Not, not, don't give a crap. I'll tell you right now, I blew three accounts, over risking, over trading, and then I decided. Well, I, I made the decision to say no. I want to be successful. I'm going to do what it takes to be successful, and that is to start. What I felt was the right thing to do was to start from the very bottom. Build my confidence from the very bottom up and start with the smallest lot size to not uh you know damage that or chase that money to start with um is the monthly installment for your mentorship one-on-one -on -one or is it the group mentorship just clarification um no so the monthly installment is just basically like you're you're cutting the the payment for the lifetime into monthly so you get the same whether you're pay uh the one-time fee or the monthly you get the same uh, you get all the same stuff. So you get part of the discord group the private channel You can come on the zoom call every morning and trade with us. You get the mentorship You get the daily analysis you get the database with all the uh, webinars education webinars all on the stuff that we talk about So yeah, that's all all included. So it's the same thing But with the installment option I did that because I had a lot of people come to me and say oh like, you know Please can you make it like an installment? I want to be able to afford it. So, you know, I want to do what I can to help where I can and I thought okay fine that's what I'll do but yeah that's it so that's all it is is that you get the same thing the one-on-one -on -one just means that you get like um, you know that one-to-one -one, like time and you know you get that uh, you know proper mentorship you know really trying to build people's skills as traders but yeah anyway you know we don't we don't like i know some people that i'm not going to say names but they you know they just have groups and they just get you in and they don't do daily analysis you know like i do constant daily analysis they don't do review webinars they don't do group webinars they don't do simulation group webinars you now we do all these things to try and work on uh you know all the things and 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 build as a team really i'm trying to build a team and you know when i'm not live streaming like for example in june anyone in the private group would have uh, access to that. So when I go away in June, I'm not gonna be live streaming for three weeks, but everyone in the pri private chat will be able to still have access to me on the Zoom every morning. We'll be doing it privately. So as we can see here, the 30 minute candle is closing above that area over here, but this becomes a very, very, very delicate, well, <laughs> I say delicate. I don't want to sound like Roger, but this is a very difficult situation, we'll say. 
um, because right now I mean one hour candle is still open the 30 minute candle closed at this area but it did kind of like reject this area you have kind of like rejected this area so to be honest this isn't the best situation for, for, for pound right now but we'll have to wait a little bit longer and see um, but I am probably gonna call it a day here soon in a minute because I've already taken my trade and so I'll just answer a few more questions and we'll see um, congrats keeping it is the hard part now yes uh, great we'll follow your style yeah I think I think you know if anyone's serious about trading you know there's no shortcuts you know did uh, did Jeff Bezos get shortcuts to creating Amazon no you know so understand that there's no shortcuts to success and every time you try and take a shortcut it just ends up in a bigger step back and I can 100% vouch that one <laughs> you know what I'm saying so yeah understand that so if this 30 minute candle let's say closes bullish that would be a better scenario because then look we've tried to come below this candle closed above this candle would then come below and then close above that's a much better situation to then say let's say if it closes something like this so we've got that wick down and then it closes like this right then you can have the next one to continue up to fill this wick and then eventually we should reach that resistance but again you this is where it's really important to wait for candles to close you can't just take that buy and aimlessly expect it to reach that level that's not going to work out or well, it may work out but not in most circumstances it won't um, okay um, what is monthly amount um, the monthly amount is 50 pounds a month but I mean I'm not here to I get accused of trying to promote myself and stuff on here so if you want any more information go to the website it's on the screen that's going to give you all the information that you need but try and use a computer because the mobile site is, is down at the minute I don't know why it's not letting you skip through the pages I'm gonna have to sort that out at some point probably do that today um, so yeah if you want to check that out it's up to you yeah, and it's not it's not fifty pound every month. It's only for the eight months to help you pay off. Yeah, 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 the yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. It's not um, it's not uh, like a lifetime. You pay monthly every single month. It's like an instalment. So you pay it for the eight months till the whole amount is paid, and then that's it. You don't have to pay anything else. You're in. You, you know, you still get all the same access throughout the whole instalment period. But yeah, like Kelsey said himself, the man. How long did it take you to reach this level? Um, I mean, I've been trading and learning all together for about four years, right? Um, but seriously, taking it serious, serious, I'd say about two years it's taken me. You know, the first year was just about, you know, trying to find my ground, trying to find my approach to the market. And then I had a good year of being profitable. And, and then like, uh, yeah, ever since then, I haven't really... I haven't really looked back to be honest not gone back to that bad state of over risking over trading you know obviously look you have bad weeks in trading like you know in the last eight months I've had a couple of one-off weeks where it's just like you know it hasn't really gone well but now I'm on a point where that's gonna be eradicated completely I've put in so much time and you know now it's now it's about week in week out consistency um, but yeah like I should have had a much better week this week even even though I'm still up for the week and I've done pretty good like yesterday should have been you know a, a, at least one win yesterday but the, the first trade I missed because I was well a little bit overslept and then the second move I had to go drop my car off and I was trying to look at the charts while driving it just wasn't really a, a good scenario at all so yeah but I don't really think it matters how long it took me you know it doesn't really matter you don't want to ever put it in your head that you have to reach like let's say I say to you oh it only took me six months so what if you're there still after nine months are you gonna think you're not getting anywhere that's not how it works I don't care if it takes someone ten years you know your end goal is your end goal
Right guys, I'm going to be back in a minute. In fact, you know what? I think we're going to call it a day here today. I haven't got, yeah. I think we're going to finish off here today. So, this situation on pound yen. I've spoken about this. Um, I've spoken about this situation. I think if you're going to look for buys, you're going to need the 30 minute candle to close bullish over here. That's what you're going to need. And then you can see price coming up to fill this wick and then retest this high. Otherwise, it's a very, very, very difficult situation to do anything, buys or sells. So, yeah, I think if that happens, that'll be a good situation. If that doesn't happen, then yeah, like it is what it is, isn't it? Um, so, yeah, so we're going to call it a day here today. I've been on the stream for a little bit now. Um, and, yeah, so going to finish off there. So, uh, let's look at gold before we finish. So, it looks like we're closing below that area now. So, I think on gold... I think on gold, if a resistance is created on gold, right? But hear, hear me now on this one. If a resistance is created on gold, then I think gold can continue moving bearish and correct potentially some of that move if we're actually going to reject here properly. But we'll see. We will see. We will see. If I see anything else, I can keep you guys updated on the Instagram, on stories and whatnot. Um, but pound yen, you're going to need to wait the 23 minutes. If you think you can take a buy based on the 15 minute, you have a lot of issues over here. And start looking at the 5 minute. Understand what you want to see on the 5 minute time frame. You know, Because a lot of the time, you're either going to need to see a high level of support. Or you're going to need to see like these minor resistances being broken through. You know, Because these are minor resistances. Because we can easily create another resistance, let's say here, and then start to come down again. So you want to make sure we're not... Uh, respecting the short term market structure this is short term market structure you know why can we see that it's very very easy to see so you gotta understand all market structures on all time frames this is your short term but your up your long term is like this right so understand where you want to be where you want to be in somewhere over here to then move up to these higher levels to retest but anyway that's it from me today Thanks very much, guys. I think we've had some good commentary today. Hopefully, dropped you guys some good amount of knowledge. I like I do try every day. Try and get you guys better every day and more. You know, just try and be informative and whatnot. But there you go. So, thanks everyone. Drop a like on the stream if you've enjoyed today's commentary. If you enjoyed today's stream. So, yeah. So, thanks very much. Have a great day. Take care. And we'll be back tomorrow i think we're gonna yeah i need a guest for tomorrow i'm gonna think about who we get on maybe i'll get on paul tomorrow i haven't spoke to him in a while but we'll see we'll see we'll see so yeah so thanks Ace. thank you no worries salim take care mate go get oh, yourself have a nice day see you later yeah. Uh, Kelsey. yeah go, go get some rest mate <laughs> oh yeah definitely like knackered but um oh mate go go yeah. go get some rest all right you know cool. what was painful there uh, cool um seeing that drop because um I was I was doing some back testing until about three, I was three, and then as I was Christ. going to sleep, about ten past three, I seen the uh, the drop on, on DJ, and it was because of the tweet from Bank of Japan. Yes, that's what we yeah, we were talking about. And that like I, I I knew it was going to be a retracement, but I just I just didn't want to stay because I knew I was going to have to wait for like an hour and a half again. Yeah, you know to just uh, like create the support, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, no worries, mate. I think uh, yeah, yeah. I think, yeah. All right, mate. We'll speak soon. We'll speak soon. Thank you, sis. This evening. Thank you. All right. See you guys. So everyone on the zoo. Uh, sorry, everyone on the YouTube. Thank you very much. We'll be back tomorrow. Friday should be a good day tomorrow. Um, but yeah, thanks guys. Uh, thank you, Lumiere. Thank you, uh, the Tyro. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you.